Hello everyone, my name is Chuck. You're watching episode 178 of Let's Plant. And in the last episode, we were busy picking out the plants that would go into our cascading bowls design. Last episode, you had so much to say. Let's go read the comments. So my main question in the last episode was what to use in the three large bowls. As you recall, I have four bowls. One of them is already occupied by the spiral aloe and I have three left to fill up. And a lot of you had something to say about that. Joshua says to go with a variety for the bigger pots. Lucky Strike says go for three different ones. Seedum says to also go with three different ones. Swati agrees also going with three different varieties. The tribe has spoken, we're going with a variety. Next question. Alright, so the next question was more about the smaller bowls this time and I wanted to get your inputs on the sort of plants that I would be using. You also had a lot to say on this one. Legendary Mayor Mary Likes Turtles, nice name, says Lila China or Lola are my picks. Hmm. Lucky Strike says another similar plant to the Echeveria Bluebird might be Echeveria Chihuahuaensis or Echeveria Beatrice if you want a bigger growing plant that is similar to Echeveria Chihuahuaensis. Noted? Shubro says Lila China would be better. Mm -hmm. I'll take all of your ideas into consideration. We will see once we get into the garden. JE Succulents raised very good points. He says he loves the concept of using sedums and Graptovaria for trailing, but with the burrito and string of pearls, he mentioned that they are not that hardy and would prefer semi-shade. Semi I agree with that. I have most of my um, string of pearls in the shade. However, for that specific spot, it is covered by the shade cloth directly overhead and there would be a canopy formed by the larger Echeveria, so I think there would be some degree of shade. It is also in a spot right next to the fence, the western fence, which means that in the afternoon it gets shaded by the sun. So the only direct sunlight that it would get would be in the morning where it's not too harsh and that together with the canopy of the larger Echeveria might mean that it is protected for most of the day. So I think it might be fine. I'm going to try it out this time and we'll have a look and review it in a few months and see if it's still thriving. Matthew Briscoe says, I felt the pain as that plant fell over. Let's watch that in a replay. So yeah, when that happened, the plant was out of reach and I was just watching it in slow motion because I was in an adrenaline rush. <laughs> Norma Gomez says, Your kids are adorable and hardworking. Brings me joy just seeing them help out. <laughs> oh no, oops, quick beheading. Yeah, the kids really like helping out in the garden and anything that would help them stay active would be great. Dylan says, Variegated Crashula ovata golum is one of my favorite plants. Thank you, Chuck. Cecilia says, Hi Chuck, I love how your garden is turning out and seeing how your family helps is such an inspiration. Thank you for posting again. Yeah. I'm so glad that the kids find helping out fun and I'm going to take advantage of that while they still like helping because I'm pretty sure that once they grow up, they would rather be doing their own things. Enough of the comments, let's go back to the video. Here's what the design looks like at the moment. After filming that previous episode, I've spent a bit of time just putting more plants around just so I could play around with colors, ideas, and arrangements. And I wanted to be able to see the plants in situ rather than just visualizing them in my head. Seeing all of these plants together triggers some sort of reaction in my head. The gears start turning and I get lots and lots of ideas. And I hope that I'll be able to act on them and, you know, create something that would satisfy my inner vision. But first, let's get rid of most of these plants and let's start off with the things that we have finalized. Actually, you know what? I've been sidetracked by this section here because previously, if you remember, we were trying to raise the garden bed and I still haven't completely done that. Actually, if you look around, I haven't really completely 
filled the back and the supports, the pots are still showing. So what I'll do is I'll work on this side first before I do stuff on the bowls. And if you can tell, yes, I am buying myself a lot of time delaying the inevitable planting in the bowls because I still want to uh, use as much time as I could get just thinking about it. So let's work on the other stuff. Let's get them out of the way. That way we could focus full steam ahead on the bowls once we're done with everything else. Let's do that. So this morning I woke up to a comment by Christina Henry on the previous video and she suggested placing the spiral aloe on the top bowl where the Echeveria broke. And you know what? That is brilliant. There's only one problem though. I already planted the spiral aloe and this pot is heavy. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I could lift it up myself. We'll see. Otherwise, yeah two-person lift but there's only one of me oh maybe there's a wee Lola no I don't think I don't think she can help me here this is so heavy maybe instead of trying to lift <laughs> maybe instead of trying to lift it maybe I could just replant remove this from here and then plant it there okay yeah that's a good idea right yes. it's a better idea let's do that
now that the spiral aloe is at the top, this leaves us with this bowl here without the plant. And I think we're just doing a straight swap. The Echeveria bittersweet, the one that broke off, should now be in this lower front bowl. It has almost been a week since the break and by now the bottom part, the stem is now dry and pretty much calloused off. I think it's now safe to plant this thing. But before I do that, I would like to remove these flower stalks because as you know, it takes a lot of energy just to maintain the flowers and to produce seeds. Removing the flower stalk would help, it, help this focus all of its energy, growing energy into root production. At the same time, I'm going to do my usual propagation method using flower stalks. I'll be cutting off the flower stalk from the base and I'll be chopping off the flowers at the top, leaving just the mid-section of the stem and I'll be planting the stem directly in soil once it dries out a bit. So let's go do that. I can't hold it anymore. Oh, it's so big! I, I, I. And that leaves us with three more large bowls. So far, I know that I really want the Kante and the Afterglow to take one bowl each. That leaves us with one more bowl and this got me thinking, now that we have the bittersweet in this bowl right here, this set a precedent for having a large Echeveria in this section. So maybe one of the bumpy ones here. I'm thinking that the afterglow should be at the back, the cante would be on this bowl, and the bumpy Echeveria over in this one. That takes care of the big bowls and pots, and next would be the smaller bowls. Let's go over the short list. So far, I have my mind set on two cultivars, and these are the Echeveria Orion and the Echeveria Bluebird. And this leaves us with two more bowls to fill. Two bowls, two plants. Now we go over the other choices. Some of you have mentioned the Echeveria Chihuahuaensis. It's a good choice. Another option is the Echeveria Lila China. Another option is the Echeveria Colorata Linceana. Another popular option is the Echeveria Lola. Another entry in the short list is the Echeveria Maribel. Now I need to do the process of elimination to figure out our four plants. As I've stated earlier, I have already decided that the Orion and the Bluebird are the first two in the lineup. I'm thinking of removing the Colorata because the Bluebird is a hybrid based on the Colorata and there's some similarity with the general shape and the arrangement of the leaves. And I'm all for diversity and I think the Lila China should be removed because the Orion is a hybrid based on the Lila China. I might also remove the Chihuahuaensis because it is too similar to the Colorata which is also similar to the Bluebird. And that narrows our choices to three. Of these three, I would definitely like to see Lola included, while technically Lola is a Lila China hybrid. But if you look closely at the apex of their leaves, it is cuspidate or acuminate with a slight protrusion at the tip. And I think I would like to have this look represented. Of the remaining two, I think I like the look of the Mary Bell more than the white one. So maybe I would just go with that. And here's the four finalists of our elimination exercise back there. And the next thing I would have to do is to replant them in their new bowls, including this ones. I want them to be placed in a fresh batch of soil with a little bit of fertilizers, especially these two smaller ones, because I want them to have a bit of growth before winter arrives.
and just like that, we have finalized our plant selection. All of the bowls are now occupied by plants and all we have to do is to fill up all of the gaps with some filler plants and maybe some trailing plants. Now, if you look closely, you will see that some of the smaller bowls are reaching out, forming a ledge on top of the larger bowls. This gives us a perfect place for our trailing plants to crawl from. We will be doing all of that next episode, so if you don't want to miss out, make sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a like if you enjoyed what we've done today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!